This video is going to be an in-depth look into the Leica Photos app. This is going to be a really in-depth video. I'm going to add chapter marks so you can jump to the question you have. I'm going to try to cover every feature the app adds to your camera. And this is, these are different features regarding to the cameras you own. The most features you get out of at the moment, if you have an M11 or an M11 monochrome, I don't have those cameras at my disposal at the moment. I have uh, a Q2, I have an SL2, and I have an M10R and an M10M, which basically have the same features. So I'm going to go into every function I know, and I figured out myself so far. I'm going to go through all settings of the app. We're going to go check out the app on the iPhone. And we're going to go also check the app out on the iPad. I am also going to talk about a completely mobile raw workflow you can have with the app and your iPhone or your iPad and Adobe Lightroom, uh, the mobile version of Adobe Lightroom. One more thing before I start, I'm recording this on May 5th, 2023. So I only can show you features that are available right now. And I guess that Leica will add new features as they release new cameras. We're expecting a Q3 any time now and probably an SL3 later this year. There also might be a S4 or I don't know, but yeah, so there will be additional features because the app in the last, I would say, 18 months made a big jump and added a lot of new features. And I guess going to have new features in the future. I don't know about at the moment. I'm probably going to do, I don't know, in a year from now, I'm going to do an additional video where I will cover the new features. This is basically the basic video just for stuff that is available on May 5th, 2023. Let's open the app on the iPhone. I have now no camera connected to my iPhone and I'm going to start with uh, my Q2. Turn it on. And we first need to go into the menu. I have the Leica Photos app here in my favorites. You can also go to the fourth page of your menu. And there you will also find the Leica Photos feature. With the Q2, the Leica connects through Bluetooth. We need to turn on Bluetooth and then we need to pair. And here you can see all the cameras that are compatible with the app. Let's go through them for a moment. We have the Leica S system. We have the SL system. We have the M system. We have the Q the TL, the CL, the Deluxe, the VLUX, and the CLUX. So now we're going to go back and we want to go to the Q2. You have all available Qs at the moment are the Q, the Q2, and the Q2 monochrome. If you have a special edition of the Q2, it is the Q2. We add the Q2. It tells me to turn on the Bluetooth and find that screen we already have. So we continue. And now... It has found the camera that was very fast. I say connect and the app will set up the camera. And now it's getting uh, Wi-Fi credentials and starts Wi-Fi on the camera. Yes, I want to join. Now it has found and connected the Q2. Now there's the first feature that the app brings with. It brings geotagging. That means if you take a picture and you have your phone with you and you have connected the app with the camera, every picture will have the geo information where you are. So you, you will later see in your Lightroom or in whatever photo app you use where you took the picture. So I turn on geotagging. And now the connection is established. Now I see all the pictures I have on my camera. And I could now, if I want to, I can check those like a preview, you can see the information you're getting. You're getting the name of the file. You see that it's a DNG. You see when I took it and you see in which time. I have the possibility now to delete this picture from the camera chip. I can export it and I can send it somewhere or I can give it a star and later when I import it to Lightroom, this star will also be remembered. I can download it. It asks me which format, if I just want to download a preview or if I want to download the whole RAW file. Let's download the RAW file. That takes a moment because it's a 90 megabyte file. 
Now this file is downloaded to my iPhone. So let's close this. You just tap on your gallery and then you see I have one picture in my gallery on my iPhone. I can press this and now I see the actual raw file. This is now the file on my phone. I could turn off the camera now. I'm going to keep this file. I can also give it a star. I can export it. And you can delete it from the gallery if I would delete it here. And now you can also see you have a Lightroom icon and the Lightroom uh, reference here. And if you press this, this picture will be imported into Lightroom. And now I have it in my Lightroom and I can do changes. And when I'm connected with Wi-Fi, it actually uploads it into my Adobe Cloud. I am at the moment on 5G because I think my camera is connected and using the, the Wi-Fi. So probably if I turn the camera off, which I'm not going to do right now, this picture will be uploaded to the cloud. I can also start like, I don't know, cropping it, uh, whatever I want to do. So I can really use every feature now in Adobe Lightroom on the mobile device. And, and when I'm finished, I can go directly into the Photos app by clicking like a Photos and it restarts the app and I'm back here now. Now let's talk about the features the app adds to your camera to control your camera while shooting. So we have here a remote button. I have now the possibility to play with my focus. This is too close, but I can set the focus here. I can set the focus here. With pressing wherever I want, I can set the focus. What I cannot do now when I'm on remote is I cannot go to my camera. If I press any button, it asks me if I want to disconnect, which of course I don't want to do right now. I can do several settings here. I can change the ISO. Now it's on auto. I can just uh, press that and then I can move that switch here. I can change the aperture. I can change the shutter speed. And I can also, I can do exposure correcting if I want to. I can also switch to video mode. And now I can do all the settings as well. And I can release and capture a video. So now it captures a video and it captures it directly to the chip in the camera. Uh, I didn't show that. I can stop now. I can go back to photo. And of course, I just can take photos here as well. I just can... Now change the focus and take another photo. They added in the last version of the app, they added the self timer function so I can go into self timer. So why you need a self timer in the app? I don't know. Actually, I don't, yeah, maybe because you, the, because you have the possibility of remote releasing the shutter, you don't need to touch the camera anyway. So you can, if you do a group photo, you can just walk into the frame and you can use the app to release your picture. Also, when you do long exposure shots, you have the possibility to not have another, like there is a, um, on, not on the Q2 actually, uh, but on the SL2 and on the M2, you have the remote shutters, uh, like the cables. You can release the shutter without touching the camera. Uh, you can also do this with the app. Leaping. We have an additional menu. Uh, and we're going to check that out. We're going to press on file format. We can now change if you want to shoot uh, JPEGs or DNG and JPEGs. I'm going to leave that with DNGs. Let's go into the menu again. We can do metering. We have those four. We have multi-field, we have center weighted, we have spot and we have highlight weighted. There's nothing happening when we press on resolution. That's just an information. And we can also change the white balance. Okay, so let's go back. Now you see it adds my video and the three tip pictures I took. So let's talk about this screen right now. We have two functions here. We can filter our gallery. We can just have our favorites. We can just see videos, just DNGs. We can see pictures we have downloaded and we can display all pictures we don't have downloaded. This is the gallery of the camera, not the gallery on the phone. And then we can mark. If we press here, we can just mark several pictures and for example can download those five yeah, which I'm not going to do right now. Now let's talk about app settings. We are now on the Leica Photos app version 337 
Let's go from the bottom. Uh, how to do? It's not interesting at the moment. That's what my video is about. <laughs> but let's see what's new in the in the latest version. So you have the self timers that applies to the M11, the Q2, and the SL2, not to the M10 series. Swipe to select that works with every camera. The tap to connect that only works with the M11. This is a, one of the M11 exclusive features. Okay, so now. What is really interesting, we go into camera settings. Here in the camera settings, you can also change some stuff which you couldn't change directly. So if you go back here and I do remote, I only have those features. If I want to have more features, I have to go into camera settings because there are more features. So we go into camera settings and here I can also change my drive mode. I can change my exposure metering, which I can change in the other menu as well. I can change my file format, which I can change in the other things. I can change white balance and I have geotagging off now. So I need to turn that on. And if you turn it on always, that will drain your battery. So it actually makes sense to only turn it on when you're using the app. For this, you need to activate location sharing in the settings. So we go in the settings and we are now in the Leica Photos app. And now we're going to do location while using the app. Precise location. Let's go back to the Leica Photos app. And now I can turn this on because I changed the settings in the general settings. So let's go back. And when I now close the app, I really close it. And now I turn off my camera. And now turn on my camera again. I see I have the geotagging icon here running and the Bluetooth icon now also appears. And that confirms that the camera is connected to my phone and receives those geotagging informations to put them in the EXIF file of the photo. I really think that's a really cool feature because the Q2 has no geo possibility. Otherwise, that's the only way to do that. So these are all the Leica Photos features I know for the Q2, except one. They added the possibility to upgrade your firmware through the app. I have not updated my Q2 since the new firmware 5.0 came out. So I'm going to show you how you can do that. The Leica Photos app informs you that there is an update available. Now we start the update. I want to join. And what happens now is I forgot to save all my settings. So <laughs> never ever do an update before saving your settings. So I have to reset up my camera. Not going to do this here now. So we now covered all the features that like a photo app adds to my Q2. One feature it does not add is saving my settings before updating. This is probably a feature request. We can uh, also when you go to the settings of the app and then you can do feature requests and uh, email opens and you can add the request you have. I'm probably going to add that request when I'm done with the video. So let's go to the M10. This now is my M10 monochrome and I'm going to show you how to connect this to the Leica Photos app. It works a little bit different than the Q2. So let's turn this on. And I have also here in the menu, I have added the Leica Photos app, but when you press three times the menu here, you come in the third page and then you have also the Leica Photos app. I press that and now it turns on the network, the wireless network, and it generates a QR code that I need to scan in order to be able to connect my camera with the app. So while it's starting up, let's go into the Photos app. And here we add the camera. We go into the Leica M family. Here we can see every M that is compatible with the Photos app. So it's all the M10s and all the M11s that are released by now. We're going to add the M10 monochrome. 
and it shows me that back with the QR code and it asks me to scan this QR code. Go and scan that. Yes, I want to join. And now it's connecting my M10M to my Photos app. And what happens is it happens to absolutely the same as with the Q2. I now have access to all the photos that are on my chip. So I was experimenting. That's why I have strange pictures. <laughs> so for example, I just can choose one and I can download this DNG onto my phone now. Now it's downloaded to my phone. I can close this and I see my gallery here on the phone. And now I have this photo from uh, Las Vegas that I took a few weeks ago. And I can also add that to my Lightroom. And here it is. And it will also update to the Adobe Cloud once I have wireless internet again activated on my phone. Now let's talk about the remote functions we have with an M10 camera. And with all the M10 cameras, it works absolutely the same. It doesn't matter if you have an M10 or an M10R, which is the latest. So let's go to remote. So let's see what I can do. I can change the ISO because it's, it has to be set to auto on the camera. So I can now change that here. I can change the shutter speed, which also has to be on the camera wheel. It has to be set on auto here. Let's see this here. It has to be on auto here and it has to be on auto here. If those are on auto, I'm able to change them in the app. I can underexpose or overexpose a little bit. This uh, like a monochrome, I like to underexpose. Let's see what we can do in the menu here. We can change the file format, same as we did in the Q2. We can change the exposure metering. Oh, here we only have three because it's the M10. And then we can change the resolution, which I have never done. Actually, I think that's only concerning JPEG pictures. So I'm doing DNGs in the highest resolution possible. Anyway, I can also remote release and take a picture. And this is a really good function because you can, for the M10, there is like a cable you can screw on the, on the shutter release button and then you can take pictures without touching the camera, which helps you when you do long exposure times. You don't need this accessory because you can remotely release the shutter in the app. So that helped me several times already when I did like night shoots or just when I experimented with long exposure. I used the app to release to not give the camera any eruption. Let's also go into the other camera setting. Camera setting and I can tell you it looks like that we can change drive mode here. We can't. It's not possible. It, uh, we I can change it here, but it doesn't do anything. You can only do a single. You get some information here. You can change some of the settings. Let me talk about the geotagging. It's not possible with the M10 cameras. The only way to get geo information on your camera is when adding a VisoFlex on the camera. This is the electronic EVF. That's an accessory you put on the, the hot shoe. That's the only way to get the geotagging information. But you also need to activate it in the camera then. It's not possible like in the Q2 with the, uh, when you have your phone with you. That's not going to happen with an M10 camera. I know it's possible with the M11. This is something they added. It has to do with the low energy Bluetooth connection and Bluetooth model. All the M10s don't have. It would drain the batteries of the camera very fast if they would add this feature. So they're not going to add it, unfortunately. And of course, when you disconnect the camera and now I have my two cameras and if I want to go back to the Leica Q2, I just turn on my Q2, press the Q2, Boom, it connects. Now we're going to have a look at the SL2. And this looks a little bit different because now I'm filming with the Q2. I did film with the SL2 so far and I had to switch those. So it looks a little bit different. And here we are on the SL2. Let me turn it on. Let's go to menu. And here I also have it as a short thing in the menu here. First needs to set your camera into pairing mode. Then you go to your app add new camera, go to the SL, 
We have the SL uh, possibilities for the SL601, the SL2, and the SL2S. I'm going to have the SL2, of course, because that's mine. Then I'm going to do continue. And now their pairing goes actually very fast. Connect. Now there is a connection being setting up through Wi-Fi. Yes, I want to join. Now my camera is added. Here I can also turn on geotagging, which I'm going to do. Now it connects to my camera. And now happens what happens with the other cameras too. It scans all the content that is on the chip. So we have my videos <laughs> I shot that I'm using later and it's going to be scanning the photos as well. It takes a little bit longer because I have so much video here. And now we have the pictures that are also on there. See, yeah, so. And here it would also be, I just tap a picture, I tap several pictures, I download them to the phone, I can upload them to Lightroom. It works as it worked with the other two cameras as well. I basically just wanted to show you how to connect the camera with the app. Function-wise, it, ex it is exactly the same like the Q2. So if you jumped to the SL2, please go back to the Q2 and see how I remote control the camera, how I download pictures, how I upload them to Lightroom. It basically works all the same with the SL2. There are no difference in functions. One thing I want to show you is also the geotagging function. This little icon here indicates that the camera is connected to your phone. And if you take a picture, you will get the geotagging data into your EXIF data of your file of the picture. Yeah, this is basically what I wanted to show you on the iPhone. I'm now gonna switch over to the iPad. I want to show you how the app looks on the iPad because it's actually pretty cool. And I had a time where I was thinking I maybe just change my workflow into completely not going over my computer. So like download everything to my iPad and then upload it to the Adobe Cloud. But then somehow I went back to classic. That's a whole other story. And so I still need to go through my, through my laptop. But it's basically working with a Leica camera and an iPad with Lightroom on it. You don't need a laptop anymore. So let me show you how it looks. So now we are connected to the camera and as it was possible with the iPhone, I can now remote control my Q2. I can change the focus just by touching the point I want to have into focus. This is too close. So what now this is in focus. I can change all the settings down here. I can change my ISO, I can change my aperture, I can change my shutter speed. I can go into video mode. Again, I can also have the focus here. I can start taking a video. I can do everything I can do in the iPhone. What I really appreciate here, because it's a little bit bigger, I can say I take several pictures, I download them. So let's do that. It's yeah, 500 um, megabyte takes a moment. And now if I check my gallery on the iPad, I have all those pictures here. So this is the Leica Photos app as it is in May 2023. There is, of course, a wish list I have. And uh, this includes, for example, faster switching between cameras to have the possibility to automatically download the pictures you're taking if I'm like with my SL2, if I'm on a movie set shooting stills, it would be amazing that when I just put my camera away, that it automatically downloads my previews, for example, to my Photos app, to my iPhone Photos app. Nikon does that, for example. In 2019, I had a C7. I did that. It was absolutely amazing. I took the pictures. I had my geodata also imported into the files and I had the previews immediately on my phone. This is something I think there is potential where Leica could implement more functions to the app. Of course, I get that it probably has also to do with older hardware. So I hope when once the Q3 comes out or once the especially SL3 comes out that they can implement stuff in the hardware that will help add features into the software. If that helped you and you like that, please like and subscribe because it helps my channel. And if you have any uh, additions, please put them in the comments. I'm happy to uh, read them and to also try them out. And if you have any questions that I didn't cover, maybe I can also help you. Please also 
put them in the comments. And yeah, thank you for watching. Stay curious.